Let's talk YouTube signatures. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I didn't even realize Fluff had recently gotten a signature guitar, but we're going to talk about the early days of guitar YouTube today. If you like to watch gear reviews and guitar-related content, you have so many options today. But allow me to paint the story of the early days of YouTube. There's three main categories I would put these in. Guys that were trying to teach lessons, other ones were just being meme lords, and it seemed like they just had this really cool friend group that you wanted to be a part of. And then there were other people who were putting on shows. So for example, some of the lessons guys, were like Marty Schwartz. I would kind of consider Robert Baker within that territory because that's what his early works were more like. You could also say Steve from Boston, formerly known as Pixie Licks. But then the meme lords. I mean, the king has to go to Jared Dines and Stevie T. I don't know if you'd necessarily count Rob Scallon in there because he's just on his own whole different level and was one of the earliest YouTube guys to get a signature guitar. But you might enjoy what Agufish creates yet today. But within the shows, the one that come to my mind was Greg's Guitars because he seemed to have a video on any model that you wanted to see of him playing it. But don't forget about Guitar Point over in Germany with Ollie Neander. Love those classic episodes. And the heavy hitter influencer for my show was Fretted Americana with Phil X. Phil is just such an awesome guy. And I love the way that he would break down like how to play certain riffs, sometimes in the Fretted Americana series. But I was always left wanting more history wise. So playing off of influences that I've seen from like video game channels at the time, you know, Angry Video Game Nerd, Peanut Butter Gamer, etc. I kind of blent those two elements to create the show that I wanted to see that just wasn't exactly out there as far as getting really nitty gritty and explaining it in a way that makes sense, ties all the models together. Scott Grove had a show similar to what I was after, but wasn't exactly what I wanted or could get into at the time. And you want to know what's great? Most of these guys are still out there creating content yet today. It's a lifelong passion, not just a short term project. So why do I bring any of this up on the Ryan Bruce fluff signature guitar? Well, I kind of consider him part of the OG YouTubers. And, you know, it's just kind of nostalgic to look back at where they were and where they are now. And I'm happy that maybe I've influenced some people in ways that they have done for me as well. In fact, if you really like my show, as far as like the guitar hunting segments, Fluff does something similar now in his crazy reverb listings, where it's more than just Gibson guitars. So maybe check out one of those. So now we get here, Fluff's new signature six string Stingray by Music Man. First off, we have to start with the name. It's hilarious. He seems to be non-believing that they actually let him name it Teely Dan, you know, a play off the artist Steely Dan. Now, when I think about Ryan, I typically associate him with the RD body shape because in tons of his earlier videos, you would see him using one. But 50 in total were made, 25 were this really cool aqua blue sparkle with a black pick guard. But this is the Sweetwater exclusive finish of 25. So if this doesn't do it for you, maybe this one will. But Nick actually knew guitar date this one. So that's why we get to document it on the show before I ship it off. But he's buying this for his son because he had just recently bought his dream guitar, a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom, based on the videos that I've documented of so many. So now he wanted to get his son his dream guitar. So as far as all the nitty gritty details and specs, we'll get to that on the workbench, but it's kind of got like some Telecaster, Stratocaster like elements blent into it. This is known as the Stingray by Ernie Ball Music Man. Feels like a very solid guitar and they are offered at $3,199 brand new. They're satin finish, they have his signature humbucker in it, they have a really nice swooped heel back here, and of course you get a bird's eye figured maple neck. And these are shipping out in gig bags, however this isn't like a regular gig bag, this thing is ridiculously beefy. It looks like it's basically a flight case but not made of metal. Mono is a very well respected brand, I mean the minimum padding distance you have is like an inch and a half down here. So if you were turned off that it came in a gig bag, don't be. This is like tour grade level quality, similar to what Fluff would need. And inside the outer case compartment, you get a signed COA that has his little caricature on it. And these are all individually numbered, not on the COA, but at least on the neck plate. This is number 15 of 25. But first impressions, feels like a nice guitar. It's quite heavy. I thought it was going to be lighter, but yeah, it definitely has that high quality feel. Like you're going to see this is many modernized specs. So let's go ahead and get on over to the workbench to take an individual look at its parts. Inside Teely Dan, let's start with our pickups first. So this is a Fishman Fluence single coil, as well as his signature fluff humbucker Fishman Fluence. It's worth noting that the bridge pickup cover is black chrome, whereas you have more of like a satin plastic look on the single coil. 
From the interviews I watched of him, it seems like he mainly only ever uses his bridge pickup, but he put that in there just in case he was doing like some sort of a demo and wanted to change up the tones. But I think you guys will be happy to see this. It's actually routed for two humbuckers, so if you don't end up liking that neck pickup or you want to try something else out, you do have the possibility. Now that I look at the route, it's interesting. Look what they've done. It's squared off here, but then rounder there. So it should be able to accommodate quite a few different pickup styles. And we do have one other sticker in here with a build date on it. But it looks like the fluences are built on a quick connect system on the back. And here's what the back side of that looks like. And we've got a 1691 written on this one. Or is it 69 in parentheses? You tell me. This is a Honduran mahogany body. Looks like the only exposed place is in the screw holes. Here's a look at our Perloid pickguard stock. It is multi-ply, Perloid, black, and then white. So you could change that if you'd rather have that blacked out look too. But now as far as our controls, so this is a really firm three-way toggle, and then this is just a single master volume because he doesn't use tones, but it does have a voice selector. So we'll get to demonstrate that a little bit in the tone sample. But they call this the Modern Classic Hardtail Bridge. It's kind of cool. It says Ernie Ball Music Man on it. It has the whole Stratocaster vibe as far as your saddles go, but then you have this cover over top of it so you can rest your hand on it. Apparently his touring guitars all have some sort of a trem system them, so he wanted a hard tail on the signature model because he just blocks them off. I can get behind that. But this is a satin urethane finish. It's got a little bit of a comfort rounded edge over here and it's just a nice flat finish. We'll see some more of that over on the back. But moving on from that mahogany body, you've got that roasted maple neck with an ebony fretboard. And it's adorned with the very small dot inlays. And these are stainless steel frets, 22 of them. They're looking nice and shiny straight out of the box. I do want to comment on just how smooth the fretboard is though. They definitely do some fine sanding to it. It's not like all open pour. It's very nice, dark, even color. I wonder if they dye it at all, but it nearly feels like they put a satin finish over top of it. And they're built at a 10 inch fretboard radius and a 25 and a half inch scale length, but kind of a skinny nut width, 1.62 inches and 2.03 by the 12. First fret neck depth, 0.85 and chunks up to 0.95 by the 12. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. It almost has like a drop off swoop to it, which now that I've seen it, I can kind of feel it. This is the more rounded over portion for your thumb. Then it just slightly sculpts away for your soloing territories. Coming from more traditional guitars, the headstock looks rather small, but they amplified that effect by painting the ebony fretboard at the beginning of the neck here black. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for the whole teal coloring. It would probably have been easier for them. It made the headstock look a little bit longer too. And you'll also notice that the nut is compensated. I think that's what all those cuts are about. We've got the Ernie Ball Music Man logo and the Stingray. I think it would have been nice if we could have put Fluff's signature right here. Because let's face it, if you're buying this guitar, you're a big fan of his. You want to show it off a little bit more. But I can totally understand why an artist would choose not to do that. Also, something to keep in mind, this comes stock with 11 gauge strings. So if you were to happen to buy one of these and wanted to play in standard tuning, and you just thought this thing was like ridiculously stiff. That's because it's designed for drop C sharp from the stock factory settings. So think drop D, but a step below. So with all that tension on the neck, where is the truss rod? It's down here on a wheel system. And now we move on to the backside. We can see the string through ferrules, as well as our neck plate a little bit more clearly. So I guess I can kind of see if he's going to have the signature on his neck plate. Putting it on the headstock probably would have been too much. But I do like the fact that they numbered them to give it kind of a collector vibe. But the Fishman fluences are apparently active, so you do have to have a 9 volt battery. And I popped that out just to see if we could see the bare mahogany anywhere, but nope. But it has the Music Man branding on the back. Your output jack is located on the side, and then strap buttons at the bottom and at the top of the horn. But look at how the neck hugs into the body right there. It's not seamless because it's a five bolt on design. However, they try to blend those woods as best as they can. That feels like it's going to be comfortable. And speaking of comfortable, they have a very thin finish on this neck. You can actually tell where they kind of sand the neck's finish down, which at first I was like, yeah, I don't know if I really like that line, but there's not really that much of an abrupt difference, but enough to tell that if this was on the entire neck, it wouldn't be as smooth and effortless to play. But they call it a roasted figured maple neck. It seems many of these have the bird's eye pattern within it, but you also have a little bit of flame blent in there. So metalhead guys tend to like bird's eye and burl, so it makes sense. But now the backside of our headstock, we've got locking Schaller tuners and our little California bear. 
All said and done, this one only weighs 8 pounds 4.3 ounces, but it definitely feels chunkier than that. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and see what kind of tones we can get. Definitely an interesting plethora of tones here. That bridge humbucker is really dark. I know the neck pickup was kind of an afterthought, but I like it. Definitely all of the pickups have that oomph of an active pickup though. And then them together. Seems to favor that neck pickup. Then you can also do your pulled up voicing. Big difference on the clean channel, but I've heard it sound different on distorted, so let's give that a shot. Well, there we go. Now that we know all about Fluff's new signature guitar, what are my final thoughts? For me personally, it's not my style of instrument that I normally document or play, but it was fun to get to experience it. Having such a heavy gauge string, I mean, 11s aren't that crazy, but my goodness, I'm used to 10s. These things just feel like power wires. 
<laughs> and even though I'm already tuned down, it just feels like it's still such a stiff guitar, but that's great for your chugginess and the style of music he plays. So maybe not the guitar for me, but I'm so glad Nick sent this over to us to check out. And we got to document something a little bit different. This whole body shape just kind of reminds me of like some of the Ibanez Tallman guitars or similar things. I'm not really sure about the history of these companies, who came first or whatnot. But once you just start chugging away, it is quite a comfortable shape. I guess in many ways, it reminds me of a Mustang. But as far as the build quality goes, yeah, this was excellent. I don't have any issues with the quality on this one. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoy your newfound guitar knowledge. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna see your brand new guitar on the show, you can find more information out about my new Guitar Day program on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.